Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Arts of Iron 4, Kyle's right against the KMD, let us continue on for the last set off. So last time we had a, there was a coup attempt against Wang Jinwei, uh, in the city of Wuhan. We were able to put that down, we gave amnesty to Song Xingling, I'm hoping that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. But I'm sure we will be okay, right? I'm, I'm sure, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Reassuring our partners. Chairman Wang has dispatched his trusted friend and comrade Cheng Gongbo to discuss with the Chinese syndicalists on establishing a reunited united front to greater international support. While Cheng is firmly in line with the ideals of the Nationalist Party and the Reorganized Comrade Association, he was once a powerful labor organization within the Chinese Syndicalist Party. And many within the CSP radicals have read his works and acknowledged him as a prominent socialist in their own right. As the League of Chinese Syndicalists splits into factional con uh, conflict, Chen has approached the Syndicalist Party itself and has found an agreement with both the Orthodox and Radical factions who have acknowledged Wang's leadership of the party. In the meantime, the chairman is busy at working and underway the party, uh, undertaking a party reorganization. Only those who are members of the RCA and whom have pledged loyalty to the RCA and Wang have been allowed to receive membership within the legislative one. So I think we want to favor the Orthodox. Work with the radicals. Representing a younger European educated uh, gener generation, the solution of the CSP Orthodox faction, these socialists push for a more active hardline role of the CSP in Chinese politics rather than merely staying in the shadow of the Kuomintang. Absolutely not favor the Orthodox. We don't want the radicals to uh, get in charge because they, they want to basically get rid of the Kuomintang and install a government similar to like the one in France. However, the one in France, as you may or may not notice, is currently faltering against the Germans. Same with the ones in Britain and same with the one in Italy. Well, Italy's led by the total list, but you know what I mean. Is there any non... Because you're... Okay, well, you're just owned by the United States right now. Okay, we've got our light machine guns. So we can actually now start producing... Um, yeah, go up to level 3, please. We can now actually start producing aircraft, which is, I think is probably good for us. So let's throw in a... Uh, radio negotiation. Let me. There we go. Give me basic. I mean, these planes suck. Don't get me wrong. But we do need to start building up an air force for sure. For sure. For Nineteen. Because these are, these are all just like um, getting more resources, which is nice. But I honestly don't think it's really that necessary. So you are for Sunfo. I don't want Sunfo in the country anymore. At the PAC-led opposition of Wang feels out, the sense of normalcy is returned to Legislative One. Most members of the Reconstruction faction have been allowed to return to their seats without hassle, though how long this liberal fifth column will be tolerated is an open question. As the military measure, they have been put under extensive surveillance for any further subversion, and the Cox meetings have been openly monitored. With any potential military muscle uh, to their ideas evaporated with the collapse of the Wuhan Rebellion, the best they can do is meekly uh, mew about constitutional principles. If this is the route they would prefer, a gentle hand of intimidation and blackmail should be sufficient to keep them contained. For the Crown Prince himself, a few embarrassing secrets have already been dug up, including his longtime enlisted flater with the former Secretary Yan Anjun, with whom he has fathered a daughter with. Sun Fo, it seems, has fallen behind his hush money payments, bankru uh, bankrupted by his political efforts. This and other affair would make uh, an unfortunate source of embarrassment should it be leaked to the press, something Sun has been made well aware of. Not everyone in the old Reconstruction faction wishes to serve as a pillion, controlled opposition. Many members of the bourgeoisie, who believe Sun Fo could live up to his promise to prevent a full social takeover of the party, has taken uh, what well, assets they could and fled abroad, like the traitors they are. With the power now in Wang's hand, perhaps they have already played the role they needed, and perhaps we better be served overseas. Sending Yun to America as an ambassador, or touring Southeast Asia as head of the Overseas Chinese Commissions, or even back to Honolulu as head of some cultural, cultural organization. It matters little. As long as he's out of the picture, we have little to fear. So either the fear will keep him in line, or we can send him overseas. Is he one of our leaders? Well, what does Sunfo do? Political power gain goes down, but he is a weekly stability leader, which actually would be quite kind of nice. Um, I think, you know what? We have no use for him anymore. Send, send him to America. He can hang out with Browder. And we'll see how that goes with him. Because Honolulu is also controlled by the uh, Totalist America as well. So we were in this kind of like interesting situation where... I mean, like, who's he going to go to America to talk to? Right, because the United States is now led by the uh, 
now led by the totalist. So it's not like there's going to be anybody there that's going to be really receptive to his uh, liberal ideas. I mean, and that, that's basically fine. Okay, so the British did kick out the um, they, they did kick out the Austrians from Cornwall. Okay, the final warning. Deng is relentless in his criticism of Chairman Wang. In a recent public speech to party members, Deng described Wang as a venomous opportunist, a snake in the party who had been merely turning the comrades against one another contrary to the ideals of the late Dr. S uh, Dr. Sun. Wang is a patient man, but his patience grows thin. Day after day, Deng has lobbied insults towards Wang and his family, in particular his wife, who Deng has disaffectly referred to as a Le Choi, the old woman. Despite their differences, there is a degree of respect between the two men. Both are early Cantonese party members, and both worked and studied in Europe during the Kuomintang exile. Yet for Wang, the residents' faction, especially Chen and Bojun, have been pressuring Wang to take out the threat once and for all. In the dead of night, Li Shudyun, Wang's bodyguard and trusted hand, suddenly received summons from the chairman to his office. After a brief discussion, Wang quietly instructed Li to do something about Dang and to take him out before he becomes too much of a threat to the revolution. At once, Li agreed and the plans were drawn up to either have the secret services abduct and strangle Jen in the middle of the night or to shoot him in broad daylight as making an example for all traitors of the Kuomintang. Do it in this car, make it quiet and painless. I don't want to get the Totalist more power. It does not seem to be... It's not good. As far as what the one event said before, if this party popularity is higher than ours combined, bad things happen. Okay, Legation Cities is now cored. Fantastic. So I don't think we have any uncored territory now. And what about with our trucks here? You're a Zeely Cleek officer? Why would I want a Zeely Cleek? Who's actually here? Yeah, I don't want the Zeely Cleek officer in here. You are a Gumajin general. Which is fine, because they were mostly... Yeah, we want a left KMT officer here. I'm going to deploy you... Oh, I don't even, I don't even know. I guess we put you, like, here. And Green Army, you no longer need to, um... Be near Wuhan. Also, I got rid of. Oh, I guess because when you stop being a puppet, or you change your puppet status, you got rid of our front line. That that's something that can happen. Okay, so we're building more submarines. Let's build up some heavy cruisers as well. We just need to build a navy. We need to start building an air force. We need to also research. Can I build bombs, or is bombs a different technology? Yeah, we need to actually research bombs as well. Probably also get better planes. Also wouldn't be a, the worst thing in the world. Okay. Exercising the shadow. The news of Deng's death slowly trickled in. Why did not bother to fake much surprise at the turn of events? And most senior members of the party knew what happened anyway. Though kept their mouth shut. The message sank it all the time. Uh, sank all the same. All but the close of Deng's associates have cut ties with him by this point, And even his inner circle could do litter but sit uh, helplessly. Clanjing Ling has fallen to a deep grief. One people say she has not expressed since her husband died. Whether she is really having an affair with Deng or if it was truly like they were brother and sister, like they said it was, was moot. She will not uh, be much of a threat in the future. Her request to leave the country and go into exile has been denied. She will probably spend the rest of her life in executive, effective house of rest, with agents watching her from the shadows. Speaking of which, the blame for Deng's Jeff has been assigned to the elusive sinister force of military deep state. And Dai Chen Fiang has publicly charged with a crime and arrested before uh, he could slink back underground. A convenient scapegoat. Removing him kills two birds with one stone, and few will believe his pleas of innocence during the show trial. A fitting end for the monster. His associates have another question, for better or for worse. Uh, Hu Zhongnian and his clique have a degree of popularity in the makeup of a major uh, segment of the Young Guard. That, and by large, being loyal to us during the PAC's rebellion. Even though they do not join with the rebels, they are still a threat. And if there were any time to eliminate them, now would be the chance. So we can retire a lot of people. Again, we're going to take another save here. And just in case, this is, this is a just in case save. They will join him in the gals. Okay, our one, our one person we just assigned here. Okay. Well, we'll assign you to this army instead. Because yeah, you're going to be our truck divisions, which is nice. Do I, can I... I mean, 33,000 rifles. We can build a stupid amount of units. And actually, what we should do... 
You have 20 combat with. Let's. I mean, how many artillery pieces do we have? Only 300. No, that's anti air. We have 3.8 thousand artillery pieces. We have the committee's own. Let's throw in the ranger company. Let's throw in support artillery as well. We will have more than enough equipment for this. If I were to throw in AA, would you actually have enough for that as well? No. Okay. So we'll remove you. Throw in a cavalry detachment. And we're looking quite fine on that. We'll save you up. For you, let's throw in this. That looks good. Engineering company. Can we throw engineering companies in here as well? We can. Sure. Why not? Throw that in there as well. All that sounds good to me. Copy of Committee's own is basically kind of a garbage division. The port artillery. We got the rangers. So how many of you do we have? We have 28 of these guys. Now I know we only had them because we needed to deploy units quickly. So if we can switch you out. With the copy of Committee's own. I'm feeling pretty okay with that. It does mean we, we are going to need more support equipment. 1.5 thousands. Which is not so bad. Let's throw 10 on you. Actually, take 5 off this. I don't think it's necessary. And actually, let's take 10 off of you. We'll get our support equipment going for the time being. And you know what? 10 aircraft. 10 basic uh, small frames. Well, sounds good to me. The true heir of the revolution. Wang has achieved his dream at last, having spent the best years of his life fighting and clawing his way into it. He is now the undisputed heir of Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the master of China, and finally has the power to change the nation for the better. He has come a long way from being the son of a failed scholar and a failed revolutionary assassin. While he basked in the glory, the politics of the nation are being shaped in his image. The resident's faction, led by his wife Chen Bujun and his brother-in-law Chu Minyu and secretary Zheng Jianming, have taken a center stage, consolidating their power through their hold over the executive Huan. Uh, they have done so at the expense of their longtime rivals within Wang's camp, the Reorganization Conference Association, the political machines that have served the Wang faithfully for years. The RCA remains divided in their camps of their own, emboldened by the power they believe they now possess. The radicals led by Chen Gongbo and a bunch of other people have proposed wide-reaching reforms to modernize China. They hope to redefine the United Front and draw the LCS closer to them, historically having pro-CSP voices such as see such as the names here. <laughs> The smaller RCA uh, moderate faction, which is actually said not right here, uh, now swells with many former PAC members. Okay. We completed Air to the Revolution. Chairman Wang has held on. And that is... Well, I'm assuming that's going to finish once you're actually done. Oh, look at that. Liberate uh, Asia. Claiming our place in the world. Max volunteers to get 50 political power. If we miss on a research slot from an earlier phase of the campaign, we'll unlock it with this. Okay, cool. The three phases of Wang Jinwei. The birthway is now unquestionably his. Since the death of the beloved eternal premier, Dr. Sen, the chairman has found his birthright contested by power hungry leaders such as Chiang Kai shek and Hu Hanmin. When the Kuantang returned to China to help complete the Second Northern Expedition, the Bonapartist Deng Yanda and his bitter widow, Song Xing Ling, attempted to oust the chairman from his rightful birthright as a party leadership. It has been achieved, and the spoils are now being divided between the once united cliques, uh, followers behind the chairman. The resident faction are currently dominant, and they have long had their eyes and ears on the chairman due to their unquestionable leader being none other than the chairman's beloved wife. Excellent. The time... Okay, so we had loyalist infighting now. Which is... Weekly civility goes down. Very, very cool. The so strike against you. The banner returns to concessions. We will liberate Taiwan. Thing is, it's kind of funny because that leads us out to invade Japan again. The nation's lament. Despite having a secure leadership of the party and maintaining his position as de facto chairman of the Kuomintang, there has recently been a large series of protests by supporters of the PAC within the cities as well as the intellectuals and students. Strikes and protests have broken out in several large Chinese cities, denouncing Wang's political moves as dictatorial and illegitimate. Within the Kuomintang, party members uh, formerly associated with the PAC have decried Wang's political conquest as well as his moves from the resident faction to staff as a national bureaucracy. They have issued calls for Wang to step down after years of leadership, but her cries for change have fallen on deaf ears due to the dominance the RCA holds within the party. Yet, it is clearly evident that Wang's consolidation of power is certainly agitated the peoples. As long as the strikes and unrest continues, Wang's position of power will certainly be troubled and, and dissatisfaction with the RCA and the resident faction may grow as a result. That's fine. They they will they will learn to accept it one way or the other. They can, they can stop being big babies. That that's my uh 
That's my takeaway. Let's complete the focus. We don't have a political power. I probably do want... I mean, do I actually care about you too much? Okay, we got to demobilize army. Which I guess makes sense. Azerbaijan has fallen. That's fine. I'm not really going to worry about that too, too much. Hey, basic medium tank. Let's go for 1940 tank. Then we'll start building our own uh, medium tank divisions. I think that sounds good for us. And then probably once you're finished, we might research what bombs are. I think that could be pretty good. Okay, so we got Air Force Revolution here. Expand the United Front. I literally don't know why we would even care about that in any meaningful way. Okay, lead the liberation of Asia. Empowering the presidential committee. You lose the ability proportional to the amount of non-radical socialist party popularity. And right now we're at 30%. So, I mean, it's not super, super high. So, subordinate the army to the uh, party. We remove this demobilized army. Or demoralized army. War support. Intrigues here go up. Well, you know, let's first and foremost, let's, let's lead the uh, liberation of Asia. That actually gives more popularity as well, which we need for the other focus. So political advisors. We want whoever will uh, empower this RCA. But you're kind of ass. Operative slots is kind of garbage. Attrition minus 10%? Honestly, that could be pretty good. If you ever go to war with Russia, having lower attrition would actually be quite nice. But I think that at least for right now, this would be a good time for us to end this episode. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Not enjoy, thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.